In the last two videos, we've been going over this paper, Algorithm for Automating the Selection of a Temperature Dependent Change Point Model. And the first video, we introduced a bit about the scope and what the purpose of this paper was. And in the second video, we started going through the three tests that really make this algorithm go. And these three tests were labeled a shape test, a significance test and a quote data population test. Now in the first video we covered the shape test which said that for these change point model shapes and what we're talking about are shapes that look you know things like this things like this, things like this. There are only certain shapes that are good. There are many other shapes, perhaps something like this, that are bad. Again, throughout all of this, what we're discussing is graphs with temperature as our main input and energy use as our main output. So in this video, what I want to cover is the second of the three tests which is the significance test. The significance test will be related to what many people in regression analysis will do. We're going to be looking at whether the coefficients of our regression really make sense or whether they're far enough away from a slope of zero that we can consider them significant and thus the word and why the reason we use the word significance test. So let me scroll down a little bit. If you go into any regression package and you're doing linear regressions, which has forms of something like this, this is just one that has three inputs. What all of these will give you out is standard errors, t-statistics, and p-values for all of these coefficients. So we'll have t-stats, p-values, and standard errors. To show an example of this, let me bring over uh, an Excel output. Maybe some of you have seen this, where this is a Excel output and they were using the, the type of house and the square footage and they're probably predicting the price of the house, very common example. And you see here we have the coefficients, these are the three coefficients, this is our, the coefficient value, a standard error, a t statistic, a t statistic, and a p value. Now I don't have time in this video to go over the calculations of all these parameters, but in a future video I might do that. So let me bring this off to the side now. And what you're really doing is you're doing a, a hypothesis test. Where the null hypothesis, or what they would call H0, is that a particular coefficient, well, one of these guys, one of these guys will use beta for a more general term from here on out, is that it's equal to zero and that our alternative, uh, actually alternative hypothesis is that a, the coefficient is not equal to zero. And then you do the standard statistics that you do for a hypothesis test and you're looking if there's a p-value less than 0 0.05 or so, you can then con safely conclude that the null hypothesis is not true and that your slope really or your coefficient or the slope related to a, some certain input parameter is not zero. So again what we're trying to do with this is to say okay if I have a plot and let's say we have some scatter like this Say this is a 3P model for the first section. 
And for whatever reason, the second part slopes just slightly, where this slope is very, very close to zero. Well, we might say, look, this, this slope section really doesn't belong here. It's kind of an artifact of the data and really just a simple line that goes through the mean of this data set. This, this is better. This is a simpler, simpler model. And what you really want is you want the simplest model that still dis accurately describes the behavior that you're, that you're visualizing. Now onto our particular cases. So remember we had many different types of models. We were looking at 2P models, 3P models, 4P models, 5P models. So for example, let's, let's look at one example of this. We have energy. This will typically be some sort of energy unit, constant. say our x is temperature. Here, once, once you've transformed this variable, if we know all these temperatures as an input and we've searched and found a value for this, what we're left with is a standard linear regression that's very equivalent to y equals, well, I guess I put that, mx plus b. I had to rearrange a little bit, but you have a slope and you have an intercept and you can get out a standard error t stat t value etc and you can do this for all the different different shapes and really it, we're not worried about this part we're we're saying we've found a change point temperature through our algorithm for determining that there's lots of different ways to do that I proposed a brute force method in this paper, but after that point, it becomes just standard linear regression. You can get all these values. With that being said, what you in, in practice, what a lot of people would suggest is that you have a p-value that's less than some value, something like this. Now, the unfortunate part about p-values is that they actually can take they're a little more computationally difficult than what a t-statistic is. t-statistic is fairly straightforward to compute. p-values are not so much. It can be done, but in this algorithm, we have to do many, many models. We have to do these models over and over again. We have to try 5p and 4p and 3p and 2p models. So. We want this to be computationally efficient. We're running a lot of models here, especially if we're brute forcing to find this change point value. So instead of a p-value in the paper, we suggested, okay, well, let's use a t-stat and we'll use a threshold that you're good when your t-stat is greater than two or you're bad when you're less than two. And so that there is the significance test that we use. It's, it's basically checking that if you say have a 5p model, that let's say perhaps your data set looked something like this. Again, always energy, temperature. And you have something like this. And maybe at the very end it slopes just a little bit. And so when you fit a 5p model to that, you get something that looks like this, where this slope, we this will have a high t statistic, t statistic greater than two. This is a constant. We're not worried about that. But this one may have a t statistic less than 2.0. And in that case, what we'll what we'll want to do is let's not use the five parameter model where we have a slope here and a slope here. Let's actually go back to three parameters. So if I would draw that, you'd essentially still have this slope section, but now you would have a flat part here. And so you have a, a simpler model, a model that isn't just there to fit the little bit of noise in the data. And so that's the second test of the algorithm, the significance test. So we've covered that. And all we have left is 
a data population test, which I will go over in the next video. I hope you'll join me. See you soon.